In this tutorial, I'm going to step you through the process of creating a web service and then consuming that web service um, using Visual Web Developer. So in order to do so, you open Visual Web Developer and you're going to go to File, New Website, and you're going to choose you're going to do an ASP.NET Web Service, and I'm going to use Visual C Sharp as my programming language. You can actually choose either Visual Basic or Visual C Sharp. If you're more comfortable with Visual Basic, feel free to use Visual Basic for this class. Um, go OK. So then it's going to set up and create a default web service for you. It does a number of things when it creates the default web service. It sets up the background code page with the basic um, include files that you're going to use. So it took a minute to do that. And so it's these are the include files. You probably won't have to edit them for this class. It says it's a web service because it says web service at the top. This is the default namespace and you should probably change that um, just so um, because tempuri.org is just a temporary namespace. So I'm going to go with UC Denver.edu is my temporary namespace. Um, this is a, a def constructor, this is code that's run right when the service is first called, and this is the one web method they set up for you, and they set up a default web method that says hello world, and we're going to change that in this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that quote service that um, I described in my lecture notes. So the first thing you do when you're creating the quote service is you actually have to create a public variable and that's going to be a variable that gives um, everyone access to the quote array which is your array, big array of quotations. So I'm going to just do a, it's a string array, so I'll do string to little brackets say that it's an array which means I'm going to have multiple quotes. There. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and go and replace this with my quotes directly from my lecture notes. And so I'm saying the quotes array is a new string and I'm going to put 10 different quotes in my array. And then I just have each of, they go 0 through 9, total of 10. Um, I have my 9 different quotes. And these are the different quotes that I could potentially use in my a return by my application. Below that then as I have something that's called a web method and again a web method is something that um, is accessible and will be returned um, via the web service. They call their default web method hello world and I'm going to change the word hello world to get quote. Then instead of returning the word hello world, I want to return one of my random quotes from my quotes array. And I'm going to just paste in the code again from my lecture notes. And it says random r, and this is just a way of creating a random number. This is kind of a bizarre piece of code. Um, and essentially, when you create a new random number, it, it returns a double between 0 and 1. So if you want I want an integer and I want an integer between 0 and 9. So I want to essentially go get my next double between 0 and 1 and multiply it by quotes.length which is um, 10. So it will return a number between 0 and 10, well actually 0 and 9.9999999 because it is a decimal and it's going to convert go math.floor which will round it down. So if it's 9.99999 it'll round down to 9. If it's 8.2 it'll round down to 8. If it's 0 0.397 it'll round down, down to 0. So that'll give me the 0 through 9 and that's a piece of code that I've used anytime I want an integer, a random integer in, in, from a random number. And then for this particular application I'm going to return the array item with that integer value. So if it was, you know, 8.2, this would round down to 8, so it would get return quotes 8, which is thought, though this be madness, yes, there is method in it. I don't know. I didn't write the quotes, I just wrote the code. So now I'm done with my program. That's all I had to ch change is I had to do some initialization 
in the initial in the, the constructor and then I had to create my web method and put some code in it that causes something to happen that's really all I had to do once I've done that I'm going to go to the website I go to the build menu and I'm going to build the website and that compiles my program and it says build one succeeded or up to date zero failed zero skipped that just means it my code was compiled successfully I wrote my code correctly if I'd forgotten a semicolon at the end of the line I would have gotten an error message if I had had um, not defined these these things or I had um, not returned a value from my get quote function I would have gotten an error message and then I would have had to fix the error in order to get my my code to run now now that I have my service what I can do is I can go to the service.asmx file which is the web service file and I can open with and what I'm going to do is I'm going to view it in the browser 